Horrible histories. I like it. Aside from all of its sentence-mixing potential, it's a pretty entertaining and informative show that I think can still be enjoyed long after it was released and now that I'm not a part of its target audience. And because of this, it's been something that I've considered reviewing for quite a while. But honestly, I don't think I'd have a lot to say about the original five series, other than just gushing about how good it is. However, I still think there's a lot to say about the show's reboot, which started in 2015 and continues to this day. So as a compromise, in order to bitch about that shit and say what I like about the old one, I had the idea to talk about the four new series, over four different videos and break down all their elements and talk about what just wasn't good with it. But after watching the literal first episode, I don't think I'd be doing this show justice in any other way than covering one episode at a time. Plus they're all specials that are focused on one topic each, so I guess that makes it easier to do that. And that is how we end up here, looking at the first episode of Series 6, Crooked King John and the Magna Carta, made to mark the 800th anniversary of its signing. With the original cast not coming back for a reunion and some of them regulated to minor roles, being replaced by a bunch of British actors that could have been picked out of a dream for all I know, along with the original production team not coming back, but a lot of the show's old writers returning, almost everything was looking bad for this show. So, does it fall at the first hurdle of getting out a competent episode based around an easy single theme, rather than having to do a series of different sketches? Well, all right, I get this is going to be an nitpick, but honestly, why when you're six years into a show and have a theme song that every kid probably had memorized, would you change it? Some of the new lyrics, I'll admit, probably aren't that obvious if you're not paying absolute attention. The worst, I think, are the changes of Caveman Savage to Norman Savage, Face and Toothless, even though the Normans did have teeth. The distracting removal of groovy Greeks for civil wars. Norman Savage, Fierce and Tobler, civil wars, brainy sages, mean and Muslim middle age. And the change in Rattus Rattus's introduction from talking rat to drumming rat, which is especially annoying because of the fact that he has drums throughout this whole series, is just completely pointless. And your host, a drumming rat! But yeah, that's just that's just a minor bit, but I just wanted to talk about it just because it is changed. Yeah, they wouldn't even pay for a new tune. Yeah. Same tune, different words. What? Don't hear many nice things said about King John the First. Some people would go further and proclaim him as the worst. Alright, so this opening all makes sense. Sure, it looks cheap with the green screen background and the shitty costumes, but since this is a special, having a kind of prologue is understandable. But the problem comes with what this time is used for. It mainly focuses on John's reputation, setting the precedent for the whole episode that he wasn't a very good king and could even be called the worst in English history. The broad reasons given to explain this are his loss of two wars in France and the heavy taxing of his people and the barons, apparently to pay for his luxurious lifestyle, all of which serve as the ground work which the rest of the episode should be building on. And herein lies the main problem with the episode as a whole. It doesn't really do a lot to explain why King John deserves this reputation. To illustrate this point, I'll be comparing parts of this episode to bits of the old show about Henry VIII, who is also consistently portrayed as a bad king, and where one got it right and the other fell short. And it is not because I am short, I am actually average height for my era. What I would point out is the biggest difference between these two characters is showing over telling, and actions being louder than words. I mentioned how we're told that John was a bad king, but in a lot of Henry VIII bits he's implied to be a bad king through showing his actions. The this is your reign about him? It shows Henry was a tyrant through all the people's heads he cut off over the years, specifically focusing on his close advisors and wives, showing that no one was safe around him and highlighting a bad temper. His tyranny and selfishness is also shown in the historical desktop and horse racing sketches, where he was willing to keep it legal for children to jockey and separate from the Catholic Church on whims, basically just because he felt like it, as well as the cash in the Abbey bit with Henry and Thomas Cromwell, making up things about the monastery monks to take their land and relics just to fund a war with France. No, those monks were having more fun than me. Not really. We just made it up for an excuse to nick all their stuff. Your John, I'm sorry about you. Coincidentally, this is something that John did as well, but we'll talk about that later. Oh, and there's also just a handful of stupid actions he did, like his passing of the Preservation of Grain Act, where a bunch of animals not related to destroying crops were labelled as vermin. 
Of course, all these things are hyped up a little for comedic and dramatic effect. Horrible Histories is never going to be a 100% perfect historical retelling, and I wouldn't expect it to be. It's a good first step into history and is meant to be fun and entertaining for kids, but it finds a good balance in not insulting the audience's intelligence by just explaining things to them. So with all that in mind, what makes John such a bad king? Out of the 24 minutes in this whole episode, around half is solely stuff about King John, with the rest being miscellaneous cutaways that don't really have anything to do with him, or are more about the Magna Carta. Well, after the little introduction, we have a mock film trailer, I think, about everything running up to John's reign. At least that's what it's supposed to be. In reality, there's quite a lot of historical context to cover before you can properly understand the reign of King John. Like the Angevin Empire and the reign of his father and Richard and all that. Which is all broken down into scenes of John being pathetic and yet at the same time a traitorous schemer. It's a stereotype as old as time, being how he's portrayed in Robin Hood and other such legends. But it's perfectly reasonable that John might have been like that, you know, to an extent. But nothing in this section really backs up this idea with events or actions. It's just a vague, generalised biography, and not even a really accurate one. Maybe we should call you John Lackland. <laughs> Get it? Lackland. Because you lack land. <laughs> Stop it! And in case you're wondering, John was called Lackland because he had very little chance of inheriting anything after his father died, not just because he lacked land. And this idea that John was ridiculed by his father was a bit strange, because even though Henry II apparently did come up with the nickname Lackland, John was Henry's favourite son, as the other three had rebelled against him when John was only like eight years old. <laughs> but at least... He would not turn on his own father. Yeah, the thing is, Dad, I'm sort of siding with the French and rebelling against you. <laughs> this is also kind of weird, because I guess it's supposed to be evidence that John was a schemer, except it leaves out that Richard was also involved in this same rebellion, and that John was on the side of Henry a lot of the time, until he changed over when it was pretty obvious that Richard was going to win. This is pretty deceptive, but the actual evidence presented in the episode is just simplified to the point where it's basically taken out of context. The last big bit of this opening is all about John's relationship with Richard. Whilst I couldn't really find much about their brotherliness, what this episode portrays as pathetic snivelling at Richard's heels after starting rebellions was basically Richard patting John on the head and letting him off without supper when he found him hiding after a failed rebellion. But the two did work it out and seemed to at least get along for the rest of Richard's reign, as they did do some brotherly bonding. You know, things like campaigning across Europe together, fighting the French, all good stuff. So it seems kind of weird that he and his mother would describe John in the way they do here. He's a cheating, scheming, spineless idiot. Wait. Oui. But he is our cheating, scheming, spineless idiot. After a HHTV news report about the coronation of John and how he stripped down during it and got all the crown, which frankly just makes me think of Robin Hood and some other stuff, this section's boring because the guy who's presenting it is such a human flat line, it's really uninteresting. After all that, there's this King John extreme survival bit where apparently we're going to see John going around and start being annoying to people. But is this going to be the showcase of real history that we've all been waiting for? Hi, I'm King John. I'm an itinerant monarch. That means I travel around the country, ruling from wherever I happen to be at the time. Well, yeah, I guess that is something true about him. He definitely did move around a lot, but I'm not sure what this has to do with... You're out in the wilds of England. Miles from home, you need somewhere to sleep. Look around you. Moss, leaves, grass, nature sheets and blankets. Uh... Okay? What I like to use is actual sheets and blankets. That's why when I'm travelling, I bring loads of servants with me to carry all my bedding. Oh, okay. So out of everything you could criticise John about, the fact that he didn't sleep in the wilderness like Aragorn is what they went with. It was probably even simpler than this. I imagine they just all went around in carriages and very rarely lugged around all the king's stuff on barefoot. But even if they did... So what? John travelled around more than his forebearers, sure, but I'll bet you none of the rulers since the Norman invasion had anything different. This whole section, which admittedly does only last about a minute and a half, is a complete waste of time that's main message is, wow, look how privileged and rich John was. What a dick. I mean, taking over castles is kind of uncool, but there isn't any information about him taking over anywhere specific. So how, might I ask, am I supposed to get from this episode that John abused his absolute royal power if I'm never given any specifics of him actually abusing it? 
<sighs> Whatever, at least we can cool down now with some random sketches devoid of anything to do with the subject. Or at least we could, if they didn't suck as well. There's nothing this episode can hide behind. It's not informative, it's not entertaining, and it's not funny either. Case in point, this first sketch, set in the Third Crusades, all about Saladin and the Saracen armies. And his idea to fight against the Crusaders by blocking off a local source of water. And you might be thinking... That's a weird thing to make a whole segment about. And you are absolutely right. What follows is a three minute long unfunny conversation between Saladin and two soldiers, all played, by the way, by white people, even though there's no dedicated main cast anymore. So they, it's not like they couldn't not get other actors. And all of them just talk about the plan to block up the well. The sketch cuts off right as they're about to do it. Well, talking is a bit of an exaggeration because it's really just Saladin trying to explain it with the other two just making the lowest common denominator kind of humor that I can only imagine was written with the mindset of, oh, kids will laugh at anything, it's okay. When do they need to go to get the water? Begins with a W, ends in an L. Wall. Rhymes with bell. Cello. And as the little sprinkles on top of this radioactive death ice cream, they do the same thing with Saladin like with John, where Rattus just says good character traits about Saladin. Because if you keep around generals or advisors who are incompetent, or who can't understand simple orders or tactics, that totally doesn't make you look like a bad leader. This is pretty much the story too for the world's craziest fool sketch about Reynald of Chantillon. Except I think that's a little worse because it puppets around Jim Howick in your face doing this shitty Ali G voice and talking about bullshit just to drill it in that this is not a reunion. He like catapulted prisoners off castles with box on their heads and there's no dates or battles mentioned at all so I don't know. I don't think I'm asking too much by just wanting a little bit of evidence. <laughs> your money? No! I want your poo! What? Ready when you are, sir. Just one log for the fire. Poo joke. <laughs> horrible actors, horrible scene. This man takes a shit without wiping his ass, but one funny joke here. If it had a little bit more weight and fanfare, then maybe I could give it a pint. But I won't, because fuck this. Okay, it's time for the worst part of the episode. Really? Aside from being about Genghis Khan who lived half the world away from John and being a stupid match of the day parody, it's just... Well, let's just watch it. During his life, Genghis Khan turned most of Asia into a bloodbath. What kind of soap would you use in a bloodbath? It's not a real bath, Jeff. So we've got these two chaps present a man and miss the castle. Based on their little opening banter, it's clear that Big Jim here is supposed to be the voice of reason. Cutting over to the battle, which is never named, so it might as well not be in the episode because I'm not going to remember it afterwards if I don't know the fucking name. Genghis gets into some kind of philosophical debate with the guy because apparently the new Horrible Histories team have well-defined ideas of honour and glory. There is no honour in war, only victory or defeats. I'm not sure that I agree with you there. Then I'll kill you! Ah! Thanks, lads. Looking at this guy makes me angry, though, so we'll go to the end bit after the battle bit. How about my religious tolerance? Or the fact that I outlawed kidnapping women, stealing animals, and enslaving other Mongols? I like how even though Genghis Khan did do all these pretty good things, considering what he's famous for, it's still shown to be obviously not okay that his Mongols destroyed what is believed to be around 11% of the world's population at the time. Especially considering that the Black Death only killed 25 million people around 100 years later after these events. But then... Ugh, just watch. But you have killed quite a lot of people. Fair point. 40 million is plenty. Great for the environment though, Jeff. Dead people don't produce CO2, methane or chop down trees. He really deserves to be remembered as one of the most environmentally friendly rulers of all time. Yep, you just heard that everyone. The mass destruction of Genghis Khan and the Mongol hordes throughout Asia is all okay because it allowed fucking trees to grow. Apparently this is like a scientifically supported thing, but it doesn't matter. It's an after effect, sure, that you could. I'm not saying that you can't do science to show that and that you can't present that as a fact, but it doesn't mean that in a show for fucking children, it's in any way okay to imply that mass slaughter, which is tantamount to genocide, was in 
any way good because it was good for the environment. Like, Genghis Khan knew that. So, of course, after learning this stunning fact that genocide is indeed okay, I had a little think about who else I know in history that did this kind of damage. Hitler, the angry mustache model. But don't worry, everyone. They burned the bodies of the people killed in the Holocaust, which definitely produced some kind of CO2. So the Nazis are still bad not because of the obvious, but because they were filthy ozone killers. Oh, and how do you think they followed up the implication that genocide is a general net plus for society? With a fucking fart joke. <laughs> Be fine. Oh, and Genghis Khan does not mean strong wolf. So if all the stuff that I just said hasn't convinced you that, if not the episode as a whole, or just this section is bad, it gets something wrong. So there. Wait, what was this episode about? Oh yeah, King John. Back in England, things weren't going well for King John, but instead of being nice and trying to make more friends, he just kept winding everyone up and being really, really annoying. Everything here is, is the same as the other bits from like near the start. It's just a series of random things meant to make John look bad without providing any specific events to hit the point home. I mean, he is doing specific actions this time in trying to hustle money out of people, but it's still not very good. There's this one about John tricking the barons with a fake call to war, only to steal their funds and call it off. Assuming this did happen, because I couldn't find anything when I googled it, I feel like the way it's portrayed just makes the barons look really stupid and gullible, rather than being repressed and being, like, milked by John for all all the money that they had. The next one is about how John seized lands off the church and used them to make money, just like what Henry VIII did all the way at the start of the video. On the surface, both of these sketches look like they give similar bits of information. It's just that Cash in the Abbey goes on for longer and is kind of more specific, mainly because it has a longer runtime and can focus on things. They're similar in that both aren't about a specific church, each covering a whole pattern of behavior, and are filtered through two different kinds kinds of formats. But the problem with the one in this episode is in the details, in that it has none. John just took church land and sold it back to the bishops? People who ran the churches? And he did all that just because. It might say that he did it to fund a war with France, but like, that's it. To make another long story short about all of this, John did annoy the Pope, which they said at the start, and as a result got excommunicated after all the church services in the country were stopped for a few years. And during that time, John did take clerical land or heavily taxed churches that refused to support him. So this episode does get it sort of right, but it just doesn't go far enough. And the last one, well, I think it's actually pretty smart. I'm going to build a whole new town just so that I can charge them for a royal charter. I'm going to call this con Liverpool. As well as getting money from a charter, it also created a port that could trade with Dublin. And it was somewhere that apparently John had more control over. So if this bit when really not just the last part, but just this whole sketch, if it had more than like a few seconds spent on it, it could have been a big positive in the sea of shit that is just this whole episode. Oh, only three sections left to go. Two songs and one bit at the end. Talking about the quality of the songs in the Horrible Histories reboot and comparing it to the old ones would just take far too long to put at the end of this video. So I'm going to refrain from talking about the musical elements of the songs in this episode. I mean, they're not super terrible as like songs, but you know, I'm still going to complain about them. Starting with the Grievance Battle. <sighs> Well, it's not just lame, it's not just cringy, but it's completely useless. It's a stupid rap battle between the Barons and John where they just make stupid, cringy rhymes about the stuff in the Magna Carta that manages to go on for two minutes without really saying anything. It throws out some information, but you can't really get anything about it. It just seems like it's more focused on being flashy and throwing shit at the screen just to keep people's attention. Oh! Dog, I'll agree a skanky the last Magna Carta song, a parody of 500 Miles, has basically the same problems of being super vague, mainly because of how it tries not only to focus on the medieval history of the document, which this entire episode has failed to do, but also to simplify its impact upon the rest of history. Talking and just thinking about all the Genghis Khan shit has really drained my want to go back into Google and try and really research on the impacts of the Magna Carta, but it does 
just feel a bit weird over the course of one song to jump from it talking about limiting John's powers to then going to it founding the Declaration of Independence and UN Human Rights. Fun story though, in this they consistently mention Magna Carta being Wash your toes at school But the only time I think any child in the UK has ever been taught about this was during its 800th anniversary in June of 2015 where I can remember at my primary school having a little event about the Magna Carta where we actually listened to this song. That wasn't that fun of a story, but you know, I, just, I just thought I'd let you know. Paul Johnny Boy is now remembered for being a rubbish king and for a document he completely ignored. I wonder what he would make of all that. Fuck, 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 ah, oh, fuck, fuck. Okay, apart from the one other funny joke in this episode. That's going bonkers, is it? This is such a terribly unfunny section that I'm feeling both secondhand embarrassment and disappointment that Simon Farnaby was even in this. Death just kind of shits on King John a bit and then completely disregards real legit criticisms of Richard the Lionheart and banishes him back to somewhere in this stupid fucking Graham Norton parody. Fucking, he does really unfunny impressions and I have no idea who is meant to find this funny who's watching this. So not only does this episode teach basically nothing about King John, but Richard is portrayed unequivocally as a hero, even though less than nothing has been said about him. I am not gay. I have relationships with women. Sex with men. Sex with women. And I got news for you. I mean, she can. Fuck, I hate this episode. If I had to use this one episode to the Crooked King John special to say why the new Horrible Histories reboot is bad, which I guess that's what I'm trying to do here, I would say that it's because it goes against everything the original show is about. It's not entertaining, it's not engaging, I don't even think a child would find this engaging. It's not funny beyond very shallow jokes that will please like the very young children that probably fell asleep three minutes in. And it's barely historical or educational. A lot of the King John bits are just played for comedy by just making him look pathetic and just don't really say anything at all. And I'm not saying there can't just be like pure comedy bits in Horrible Histories. There definitely has been in the old show. So it'd be really hypocritical of me to say that I want it to be a history lesson. But the problem is, is that there's nothing to contextualize or educationalize any of the jokes. There isn't a scene of an English baron bursting into his home and ranting to his wife about all the new things King John has taxed on his lands and how massive the bill is that he's got. And he's you know, exclaiming all this stuff about people getting fined for hunting in the loads of new royal forests that King John is just declaring and taking for himself left, right and centre. All of the complaints about churches being closed or even people getting taxed for fishing in the rivers. It's like there's a resistance to put the two core elements of education and entertainment together, preventing it from being proper edutainment. And because it really doesn't combine the two elements, the show ends up being neither of them. Oh, and it uh, also sucks because the old show did this like whole episode better in one four minute sketch, King John's historical desktop. So go watch that because it's, oh, it's so much better than watching this. And it basically gives you the same amount of information. And if you just care to learn more about King John and Magna Carta with stuff that doesn't suck, I'd also recommend the Walking Through History episode on the topic, hosted by Tony Robinson, aka Baldrick. It's a little longer than this Horrible Histories episode, but I think he does a real good job of exploring the topic. So go check it out on Amazon Prime if it hasn't been randomly taken off already. Uh, but in short, I hate my life. It might be a rumpty little piece quick, eh? <laughs> but that... <laughs> I'm confused. Is this real? I thought I was the king. I'm holding his seal. It's a life of luxury. That's what his tax was for. And when he'd spent their income fee, he taxed his barons more. Magna Carta, Magna Carta, more like not for me.